this is Shanae, and I'm going to have her tell you a little bit about herself. Hey, my name is Shanae, and we're in Seven Springs Farm, Green Mountain, North Carolina, and I want to show you the animals. Yeah, we're going to take, take us on a little tour. This is Nutty. This is actually the father of all of our goats. He's a Nigerian dwarf. And he's the nicest the goat ever. The sweetest Philly goat you will ever meet. Come on, Nutty. Mila, give him space. Come on, Mila. Come on, give him space. Nutty. <laughs> is he stretching? Yeah. Come on, Nutty. Oh, man. He's what tired. Day, what a day. Come on. You have to carry Nutty in. Yeah. Um, that's usually Eric's job. Yeah, we, <laughs> Nutty and I bonded last night. He refused to go in here into his pen, so I had to carry him in. And he smells so and good. he smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, the days that he freshly pees on his beard. Yes. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. Jay, I wish you'd do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, like to pee on, I like to pee in my beard from time to time, you know, just to get the <laughs> aroma out there. Mark my turf. We've got some organic goat pellets. This alfalfa, just for some extra, extra nutrients. Some chicken food, right there. I'm trying not to give him trying to any. Slim down. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, the ladies won't, oh. won't like him. Oh. <laughs> All right, Nutty, I'll just just take a bite, just one bite. Okay. Then. So, what is kind of the goal here? What's your plan? The, the big picture. The big picture. Mm -hmm. So we have 18 acres, about, say, at least a half is wooded. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, you know, all my kids are building houses on the property, maybe form a little bit of a community and also just grow everything ourselves. We yeah. we could plant up to 10,000 fruit trees in the, in the wooded area as like, you know, using regenerative agriculture techniques. Um, you know, goat's milk, eggs, meat. Yeah. So this is kind of the, the, the starting of the operation, kind of just getting the rolling. The starting. Yeah, the beginning of the operation. Yes. Okay. And it, it's, it's a little ghetto, as you can tell. I mean, like, Ghetto fabulous? Like, yeah, ghetto fabulous. <laughs> like, the door of our pig area. Yeah. We weren't fully ready for pigs, but they're amazing. These are Kuni Kunis. Oh, that is for them, and they're going to be very happy. This oh. is Greta and Tina. I also have some pellets for them in my pocket and, and an apple. We got some goodies. We got some goodies. <laughs> <laughs> different animal feed in different pockets. I generally will end up with um, pellets in my bed because I'll like fall asleep in the clothes that I was wearing. So who do we have here? We have this is Nora, Tabby, Juniper Jade. And these two don't have names yet. Babies. <laughs> hey, babies. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. And then... Always a and then we've got Alfredo and, and his two ladies. <laughs> Alfredo. <laughs> and I think these babies are starting to eat now. Look at that. How old are these babies? Um... They were born on June 1st. Okay. Yeah. About a month? <clears throat> yeah, and this is this is Tabitha. This is their mom, and she has no beard left because her babies ate them off. Oh, wow, yeah. Morning. Good morning. She was ready. Hey, this... Top of the morning here. <laughs> this is definitely the best mom on the farm. This this lady, this chicken lady with her, with her baby. Yeah? Yeah. So the goal is just to be kind of self-sustaining. Yeah. And you're opening up a restaurant. You did open up a restaurant. Yep. Last yeah. night, grand That's opening. Cool. Yeah. I've got so one of my daughters studied permaculture in Costa Rica, and then my I have two son-in-laws who studied permaculture in Australia. Um, this is one of them. This, this is, is one Eric. Of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're just, we all have our own strengths, you know? Yeah. And so we're just working together. Yeah. What about your background? Like, what's your... What so your my background is holistic nutrition and herbology. 
So as my actual job, I formulate nutritional supplements for um, superfood company. Okay. So I use a lot of herbs and adaptogens and medicinal mushrooms. Very cool. Yeah. So this I'm is your actual job. That's just what you do to make this happen, That's what right? I do to make yeah. this happen. <laughs> this is another one of those gates that needs some work. Yeah. I guess this is how startup farms work that aren't, you know, heavily funded. Yeah. I would imagine so, right? You just have to you be just functional. just fix one problem and... at a time. Yep. And then the temporary solution that works ends up being permanent. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. right. That's right. Okay, so... Come on. This one had a problematic birth and almost died. Eric, I heard I heard you had to do uh, some emergency procedures mm -hmm. on the uh, on the baby goat. You want to tell us about it? We, we didn't have uh, anything to unplug the nose. Yeah. So we had to cut kind of oh. like that. Pull around, that was it. Mama, well, it, it, was it, that it? He's being <laughs> modest. <laughs> So well, you sucked in some placenta yeah, out of a nose? Yeah. Tasty, tasty. And then mm. this this one was stuck. And so if we had not been up there and if Eric hadn't done the delivery, the mama might have died too, huh? The mom, him, and his sister. Yeah. I love this one. This tasty. is a little boy. He doesn't have a name yet because I've already committed him to our friends. Yeah? But I'm really sad about it. Oh. That is adorable. You're adorable. And how many goats do you milk? Um, well, on the regular, on the regular, usually two. two. So Tabby, that white one right there with her two little babies is the most gentle, sweet goat. And she's the easiest to milk uh -huh. because she lets us. Um, Inca is terrible. She kicks you like crazy. <laughs> she's the one who's not nursing her baby. Uh, so she, that's funny. Um, Mama, the big black one, has the most milk. And um, Nora has a lot of milk too. But Mama already has three babies that she's nursing. And she's a really good mom. So I'm trying not to like take a bunch of her milk uh, right I now, see. you know. Yeah. Be back with your bottle, okay? Okay? Yeah? Distracted. Pigtail chewing. Chrissy, did Chrissy. you get it? <laughs> Close. So, so with all these and all the goats, are these going to be meat goats slash milk goats? Well, what, what's the plan? Well, for us, they're all going to be milk goats. Mm -hmm. The pigs will be meat pigs meat eventually. Pigs, yeah. Their babies or them? Probably their babies. Their babies. Well, I don't know yet. You know, we're going to meet them in. January, probably sell some of the babies. See how it goes. Um, I'm really attached to the goats though. We do have five males, so that little one right there, Inca's boy, is gonna go to our friends and he's gonna be their new billy goat. Mm -hmm. And he's gonna be oh, he's gonna be in great hands. Um, goats can get well, the male goats, especially the weathers, can get um, can have urinary calculi and it's really painful for them. And I have a remedy for that. It's um, a slow cook of apple cider vinegar, lime, garlic, and the purple onion. Mm -hmm. And you slow cook it, just put it in a syringe. It works instantly. It's amazing. Really? And um, also, if they're ever sick, um, Nutty was so sick at one point, I, I really thought we were going to lose him. He couldn't even get up. He had no energy, and he had just diarrhea all over his butt. I gave him that concoction, but I added a little bit of oil of oregano to it, and some uh, five Defenders mushroom blends with turkey tail and reishi and shaga and astragalus. And I gave it to him in one dose. He was hopping Back in action. It was amazing. So anytime one of the goats don't feel well, I give him that concoction, whether it's, you know, some something they ate or whether it's, you know, urinary calculi. Um, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So as of now, I haven't done any vaccinations. I do have some herbal dewormer. 
I couldn't give it to the moms when they were pregnant. So probably in another month when they're not nursing so much, I'll probably give it to them. Gotcha. It's kind of a farm to table sort of deal, right? Yeah, and yeah. your goal is to produce most of the food that goes to the restaurant, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, and same with my tea blends. I do a lot of tea blends. I have an immune, a wellness, a, a sleep, um, a gut one, a, a liver one, a nourish one. So I want, I mean, within reason, I know we can't grow all of the herbs that I would need for right. the tea blends here. Not everything's going to grow here in North Carolina, yeah. right? But I, am, <laughs> yeah. but I am trying to get a greenhouse grant. Oh, yeah. There's, um, they give out grants, so I have to fill out the application every fall. To have a greenhouse? A, like a special use greenhouse. You just have to tell them what you want to use it for and be like just kind of innovative and creative and then you can win six thousand. Oh, i see gotcha oh very cool yeah okay uh, to for the greenhouse yeah yeah, yeah yeah that's really cool i didn't realize such a thing existed yeah and i also got a grant which i'm getting ready to start on today um for it's through the um usda soil and water department and what they do is they don't want any animals in the creek and we have a creek going through this pasture so I got the grant. What they're going to do is we get new fencing around both pastures because we have a pasture in the very back mm -hmm. that we're not using yet. If we're going to get new fencing around both, we're going to get a well. We're going to get animal feeding, big animal feeding stations in each pasture. And um, we're going to get to use an excavator. And, wow. Um, so, so basically, all they want is you to keep animals out of the water flowing. And so they're going to give you some funding to help make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Take a picture of that, actually. That'd be a good thumbnail for the video. And I can show you that. That's something you have to do. Yeah. Medieval eyes. <laughs> I told you, man, it's good they don't have uh, canines. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it's an amazing guy. So this water comes from their spring that's up the side of that mountain right there. Just flowing down, freely flowing all day. <laughs> hey, look at that so a chunk. <laughs> oh man. Crazy ass. How do you not? <laughs> if you don't find this adorable, there's something wrong with you. So, so this is Eric. Uh, and you are Shania's son-in-law, correct? Yes, I am. Yeah, yes, sir. that's it. Shania's son-in-law, and you're living on the property now? Yes, I am. Awesome. And your job is to manage yeah. all of this? Yeah, people to animal interaction, interrelations. <laughs> interrelations. That's, that's my... <laughs> that's your specialty? That's my specialty. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and you studied permaculture? I did. I yeah. did over in uh, Australia with... Um, my teacher was Jeff Lawton. Uh-huh. So... Uh, so went over there, actually the other of Shania's brother-in-law, that's where we met. Okay. Doing a permaculture Oh, very cool. Awesome. In Australia, yeah. So we all decided to get together and make the family farm work. That's it. And you're from, Me are you from Mexico City? Yes, sir, Mexico, Mexico City. City. Oh. Got it. Very cool. And yeah. you did, did you farm there as well? My pops and I had a coffee farm yeah. in the mountains, so we were doing that for a bit. Then I met Ali, and here I am. And here North you are, Carolina. North Kakalaki. North Kakalaki. <laughs> yes, sir. That's funny. Tell us about your pigs. They're your, they're pigs. your favorite. <laughs> my pigs are my Where favorite. Are they? They're right here. They're in Gordas. Oh, they love you. Hi, <laughs> <My> sweetie. Hi, <laughs> sweetie. Why do you like the pigs so much? I think if uh, just like every farm animal, they're all tools mm -hmm. in, your, uh, in your toolbox. And I really like them because of their brain capacity. Yeah? You just, there's, if you train them well, you, you don't have to be running around. You, they don't have to be giving you grief. They just, do, they just take care of themselves? And do yeah, they till. They keep snakes away. You can use them for ponds. Especially, uh, they make us not feel bad about all of our waste, which is nice. Yeah, all the yep. food scraps. Yeah. Because you're just going to give it to them, right? Yeah, that's the They idea. loved the chili this morning. Yes, they did, huh? It was cold, but they didn't mind. They oh, didn't no, complain they even didn't. a little. I bet they didn't, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and this one's eating the blonde locks you guys yeah. out there. She helps me with my, uh, grooming. With my hairstyle. <laughs> grooming <yeah>. maintenance. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's real nice. <clears throat> there you go. 
anything in particular I'd like it if it could be uh, an example site. Oh, sorry. This is a guy over there, huh? <laughs> I was filming in. We it jumped off this rock. We got flying goats in the Yeah. <laughs> super flying ninja goats. Yeah, it did. It literally flew, it on flew my back. off the rock onto her back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. What were you saying? I apologize. No, that's all right. Flying goats. You know, yeah, you it's you're very distracting. Goats. So what's your what's your your goal? What's your plan? My plan would be if I could get uh, some good old timers up here and get them interested in Farming without the use of uh, pesticides and maybe get people excited about learning between the interactions of minerals, microorganisms, and organic matter, and how to change from being fully dependent on chemical inputs mm -hmm. to just, you know, growing your uh, soil wealth to get, you know, nutritious animals and food. Mm -hmm. So that would be, that's my take. Yeah. That's what I would like to see. Happen. That's kind of your thing. Yeah, I would, mm. that's what I would really like to see happen. Because it's, uh, in this state, it's very, they use a lot of chemical. Yeah. And, you know, it's the way All they've the farms, done it. Right. It's the way they've yeah. done it. So, yeah. so it'd be nice to break into that culture a little bit. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> That'll yeah. be tough, right? Yeah, yeah, like Mexico. Yeah. People are stuck in their ways sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and people always want to take the easy route, you yeah. know. And the easy route is just it. to throw a bag of whatever out on the and thing. Why and why not? You know, people like living easy, and if grandma did it, yeah, and grandpapa did it, yeah. So why am I not gonna do it? Why would I not do it that exactly. way? Exactly. So you just gotta show it. You can be even lazier and let it do itself. Lucky, we'll call him. Lucky's a good name for that one. Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Come from the land and the ice and the snow. What is that song? Bring it. Ah. Uh, Are you using Shrek? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know. So has it been pretty tough kind of managing all this stuff getting going? Because you're still it's, working, it's, working. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. definitely been harder than I ever anticipated, but yeah. it's it's... So amazing and rewarding. It's funny because my youngest turned 19 and I could be totally free now. And now I've like tied myself You've down. You've adopted some yeah. babies. Yeah, a lot of babies. Wait, you guys see some free brother. and then somebody started a fire under it without water in it, so oh, it damaged yeah. the tub. So we turned it into a worm bin. Now it's composty worms. Yeah, I don't want to hear some. Damn it. Okay, Growing some worms. So this here is another house site. Um, Avery and Felicia are gonna build right there. Okay. So that's gonna be their little homestead. Yep. It's a nice spot. What is their plan for it? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah, I, I Felipe on? has a plan. He's, I'm sure yeah. he does. He seems like a pretty crafty guy. <laughs> he is. That's, so Felipe we're talking about is uh, another son-in-law. of his. Yes. Yeah. So I have two daughters and two son-in-laws here and one day I'll get my son And they're both super handy. And like you got, yeah, you did good. They seem like good dudes. That's, you, yeah. you lucked out on that one. <laughs> yeah, Eric is more on the animal side and Felipe is more on the building side, but they both know a lot about permaculture. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, everybody's working regular jobs too. So it's hard to get, a, I mean, we get as much done as we can. Yeah. We, that big chicken coop, we had it over here. Cause I was like, all right, chickens are gonna have their own pasture. They'll live with Nutty for now. And we moved it here and the first day we lost 14 chickens. Wow, from what? Um, a fox. Really? Just took them so, all out. So yeah, so then they, and they kept wanting to go back. <clears throat> so we let them go back and then I had a tractor come, drag the whole coop back over there. So I was like, I give up, you know? Yeah. And then a couple days after that, Alfredo the duck was out here getting eaten by a fox. Mm -hmm. And one of our volunteers was walking back here to go to the bathroom. So the fox um, dropped Alfredo and ran. Oh, wow. And, Saved the day. And Alfredo ran up to her. He was just bloody. His neck was hanging down. We just we just put colloidal silver and mm -hmm. some salt spray on him. And he lived. Yeah. 
That's crazy. Now <laughs> like, he's doing great. He's, and now he's thriving with his ladies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's That's all cool. sassy and yeah. picking on the little brown, <laughs> brown dog. Here's our reservoir. So it's 500 gallon. Um, two weeks after we moved here, our spring to the house <sighs> rerouted itself. Oh wow. We had no water. <laughs> and it was just me and the girls at that time. Yeah. And so we were drinking out of the creek for about a week. Yeah. <laughs> just filtering creek water. And then I had to learn how to set up a spring system. So yeah. I'll show it looks, you. It sounds like you got it figured out. I yes. hear it flowing. <laughs> we have a lot of water right now. This has two lines going out of it. One goes like 600 feet down to the main house reservoir. Cause we have a reservoir at the main house. Mm -hmm. The other line stops at that green barn. And then from there it goes to the tiny home. Okay. So, so this is the water that the goats and the chickens and the pigs are got drinking. It. I was on the top of the ridge like right over there, yeah. the very top. And I just had Milo and Mila and the two cats, Geraldine and Tomas. The cats were following you too. Yeah. <laughs> and the dogs ran down into there to chase something. So I was just up at the top with the cats. All of a sudden, they chased a bear to me. Oh, nice. Good dogs. So they, yeah, the biggest sound I have ever heard running right to me. Yeah. And I have never run so fast out the, the rest of the trail by myself. But, you know, you but know, I, they, I know I didn't need to run. Yeah, no, run. you know what they say, like people always say, never run from yeah. a bear, like all that kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, don't run from the bear, but if the bear's running straight at you. Yeah, <laughs> what do you I, do? I was so yeah. scared. What do you do? Yeah. And the fight um, or flight kicks in and you, you just do totally. what you do. Totally, it's amazing yeah. that survival. Yeah, you can't stop it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'll show you the top of the spring head and then so this is the source of the water the spring head comes out of the ground right here underneath this mm -hmm. big giant rock and that is what supplies the drinking water for all the animals and the house and the house yeah and the house yeah and then the white one is obviously overflow yeah very cool and the ridge is right here so basically basically there's not going to be any contaminants coming yeah. into this because you're at the top yeah, yeah. which is perfect Look at this barbed wire in the middle of this tree, this giant big tree. How old is that barbed wire to be in the middle of that massive tree? Here's a pretty sweet little, little hot tub. A bit of a little fire underneath the tub. A little bit of spring water from the spring. Uh, this spring comes from up there, I suppose. Turn on the water, fill up tub, start a little fire, and you're living large. Put your little drinks right there. Carlos's cabin here. You can currently stay in with the hot, the hillbilly hot tubs right behind it, right next to the uh, the animals. You can stay in this thing for 65 a night. It's not bad. It's got power. It's got running water. A little fire pit. It's a nice little spot. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah, Nutty. Why is he Nutty is a... He kind of does. Nutty is the nicest goat. <laughs> he just loves loves attention. He's starved for loving. Oh, but he smells so bad. You don't smell bad. You smell great. Yes, you do. Does You're it, so good. Does it keep me from petting him, though? He's so good. <laughs> He's just so happy. Aloha. Oh, it's a busy morning here. Hello there. 
Good morning. Mahalo. <laughs> Mahalo for your time. <laughs> How's it? What Suits, but uh, I take the kind and the coffee. The what? <laughs> Speaking, of, I thought we were going pigeon. Oh. <laughs> Hawaiian pigeon. Yeah, I heard it's a BYOC. Bring your own cup. Yeah. I'll take some coffee, please. Fill her up. Yeah, fill, yeah, fill her up. I'll take the premium. Yeah, I take an Americano, four shots. I'm real tired. I've been driving all night trying to find a place to get coffee. Driving from Hawaii. From Hawaii. <laughs> I drove, drove here all night from Hawaii. All night from Hawaii, which is weird because it's a big body of water. <laughs> but somehow you made it happen. But made it happen on a boat. Winter is on my truck. So this is our farm cafe slash farm store. And I've always dreamt about having my own little cafe and little little shop and I thought that you know now that we're we're on this farm we have this beautiful property everything is in the back we had this amazing building right in the front on the road and so we just converted this this was all just rocks and it was kind of, it was falling down just a shed right it was just a shed yeah. yeah um and yeah we just built it out with wood we got down the road from a sawmill and leftovers yeah, yeah last night had our grand opening and um our our idea here is to only sell local products or products that we produce here ourselves right We're really passionate about teas and herbs um because I believe that our bodies have this innate ability to heal when given the right um, nutrients and herbs have all these amazing constituents that can you know, balance our body, support immunity, support liver function, energy. So these are a couple of my blends that we will make here for customers. Um, this right here is um, immune blend. So what it is is olive leaf, echinacea, hibiscus, and ginger and then you see some calendula in there as well this one i generally make iced i think it tastes amazing iced um this one right here be well is my favorite one it has tulsi in it it also has calendula ginger peppermint and licorice root how do you create the recipes is it just kind of by taste and and need and for the ingredients like what it, each it's a little bit of both yeah. yeah so it has to taste good yeah um, and also just based on what type of pain point I'm trying to solve. Uh, this is rooibos, this is plain guayusa, we have green, we have peppermint. You know, if somebody wants to just come in and order a plain green tea or an iced tea. Yeah. But do you, will yeah. you sell jars of the stuff too as well? Not yet. Okay, just buy um, order kind of deal. Yeah, maybe in the future. As a career right now, the career that I have that supports my farm, it, um, I am the R&D manager for Organifi, so I formulate all the, the supplements, um, whether it's, we do a lot of superfood powders, we also do capsules, um, so I work with adaptogenic herbs, a lot of Chinese and Ayurvedic herbs, medicinal mushrooms, and then different superfoods and powders. And I do all the formulations. I also consult with a couple companies on the side and um, do some formulation work on the side. Um, yeah, my background, when I was in undergrad, I planned to go to med school and I always wanted to wear that white coat. I always felt like that was the only way I was gonna feel important, you know? Mm -hmm. And I got pregnant with my first son my junior year of undergrad. So that kind of changed my life. And I spent, I spent about, the first three years of motherhood just like beating myself up because I you know, wanted to be something but I didn't but I wanted to be a mom you mm -hmm. know but I felt like I needed to be something else you know so eventually I started studying holistic nutrition and herbology and I got a master's in um, holistic nutrition and I was I became so passionate and was so thankful that my life actually took me down that path instead of the traditional, you know, med school, because I've truly been able to heal people that I would have never been able yeah. to heal if I, yeah. It's cool how one small decision kind of redirects your entire life and everyone around you. Right? Totally, yeah. Um, and when I was, after I had my youngest, when I was, I just turned 27, I came down with a really bad autoimmune disease called idiopathic thrombocytopenia purpura. I teach say that, you say that <laughs> 10 times fast. Holy um, crap. And I had no platelets and it was actually a side effect of taking Zithromax. So that was the last time I've taken an antibiotic. 
Um, I had blood coming out of my tongue, my nose, I had wow. bruises all over my body, and I, I had no platelets. And you're supposed to have, you know, between 150 and 375, 400,000 platelets. Um, so it was really scary. The hematologist basically said the only chance of healing myself would be to get a splenectomy. And then he said, you'd have to be on antibiotics for the rest of your, your life. So I was terrified. Um, I made a decision to leave the hospital and I got on a massive regimen of Chinese and Ayurvedic herbs. And within two weeks, my platelets went up to 100,000. Wow. And then I added more. I was probably taking like 25, 30 different herbs. And then within the next two weeks, they were back to 275,000. And you were sold at that point. Yeah. I, it changed my life. <laughs> Mm. It taste. It's so good. Wow. All the pro skaters are going to be drinking that pretty soon. I know, right? Yeah. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, and then how can they find you? Where are you? Where are we right now? We are at Seven Springs Farm in Green Mountain, North Carolina. Seven Springs Farm, Green Mountain, North Carolina. Can they do the Google and find you? Is that a thing yet? Yes, it will be. It will be soon. And we also okay. have an Instagram, seven underscore Springs Farm. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for the tour. Yeah, thanks, thanks for doing for the coming. video. This yeah. was fun. Yeah, awesome. The awesome, the great coffee. Yeah, the coffee that was amazing. amazing. <laughs> this place is great. Come check it out if you're in the neighborhood. Um, stay at the uh, stay at the little cabin. That thing's awesome too. Come Tiny down here. home yeah. on a farm. Yeah, Green it's Mountain, North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks. See ya.